Well, the Conservative MP and Deputy Leader of the European Research Group, Marc Francois, has written to the Chairman of the Backbench 1922 Committee, Sir Graham Brady, to request an informal vote of no confidence in the Prime Minister on Wednesday afternoon at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, just before she goes to the European Council meeting in Brussels. He writes, I believe May, Theresa May has been a failure as leader of our party, which he now threatens to destroy. Hers is a classic example of hubris, and after hubris comes nemesis. Well, Marc Francois joins us on the line now. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Um, given that there was a vote of confidence in December and there wasn't, but under the laws of the Conservative Party, there can't be another one for a year in uh, the Prime Minister, what's the purpose of this? Well, I would claim force majeure because I think if when that vote of confidence had taken place, my colleagues had known that the Prime Minister was prepared to sit down and negotiate with a Marxist, someone who is utterly opposed to everything that we in the Tory party believe, and that she would do so in order to try and lead us into a customs union, which is utterly against our manifesto commitments, and which would mean that we remain in the European Union, the vote against her would have been far higher. Now, clearly, we didn't know that at the time, but we know it now. And so under those circumstances, I believe it's very important that colleagues have a chance to express their opinion on her leadership. And knowing it now, how many of your colleagues do you think would support you and vote that they had no confidence in her? Well, that is a matter for each individual Tory MP, but we know but that... From your conversations? Well, I know that large numbers of MPs, including from Remainers, this isn't just a Brexiteer thing, are extremely upset by what the Prime Minister is doing. And just to follow on from Nikki's point, and I've always got on well with Nikki Morgan, 72% of Conservative members in a Conhome survey, now agree that we should leave the EU as soon as possible, if necessary, with no deal. That's three quarters, effectively, of our party membership. So, but she actually, was also, as our, our position represents the majority of the party members, not the other way around. But uh, I'm not sure if you heard the whole of the interview. She was also citing polls over the weekend which show support from Conservative voters to these cross-party talks. Well, I, I haven't seen that poll, so I didn't, uh, in fairness, I didn't catch um, all of Nikki's uh, interview. Sorry, I, I, just, I just didn't hear mm. it, and I apologise. Can, but can I, you, the last vote of no confidence in the Prime Minister was lost. You got 117, uh, and, but there were 200 in support of her. Are you seriously suggesting that, at, and particularly at this stage of negotiations, you can get uh, more than a majority? Uh, get a majority to vote against her? Well, <clears throat> let's find out. Um, if you told my colleagues prior to that vote before Christmas that this would end up with the Prime Minister having failed to get her agreement through three times would turn to a Marxist with anti-Semitic tendencies I'm, I, to try and keep us in a customs union, they would there, never have believed it. Of course, there will be pe many people who will challenge that. But just to put that to one side, there will be people who listen to you arguing this and saying, well, if you had told those who voted in the referendum in 2016 that this is what Brexit would look like, they might vote differently. For the same well, basis that you could argue for a second vote of no confidence in the Prime Minister, couldn't you make the same argument for a vote on leaving the EU? Well, the House of Commons has debated and whether or not to have a second referendum three times in recent weeks, and on every occasion it clearly voted it down. So, to be fair, that matter has been debated extensively in the House of Commons, and three times out of three, members of Parliament said no. But coming back to my central point, the people voted in 2016 to leave the European Union. Part of my reason for arguing the Prime Minister should now go is because she has so completely mishandled the process. So if the Labour Party were to bring a vote of no confidence in the government, you would vote with them, would you?
No, I would never vote with Jeremy Corbyn on a vote of no confidence. You know, if I'm accusing the man of being a Marxist, I can hardly say that I want to vote with him. And when Nicky Morgan refers to the new right who have hijacked the party and making it less and less governable and, it, and less able to govern by the day, uh, many people might presume that she is talking about you. In fact, she refers to the ERG. Do you not... What do you... How do you answer that? Because there are well, some I'm people... Not... Well, with, with respect, I answer it with, with the answer that I gave earlier. I'm trying to be consistent. 72% of Conservative Party members, the people who pay their subscriptions, knock on the doors, deliver the leaflets, get us as MPs elected, three quarters of them support our position. They want to leave as soon as possible, if necessary, with no deal. So uh, if anybody's in the minority in this debate, it's the relatively small number of Remainers uh, in the Parliamentary Party uh, and not those people who want to leave the European Union. Mark Francois, thank you very much.